Good, Good morning, morning, Super Readers! Thank you for joining us in our Valley PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Hammock. I'm Mrs. Zhang. And I'm Mrs. Nix. This is a place for us to learn and practice and grow, grow our brains. brains to become even stronger readers, writers, and thinkers. So let's get started by warming up our brains with some ear training called Daily Phonemic Awareness. All right, Super Reader, so this morning we're going to play a familiar game to you called Phoneme Segmentation. Now when something is, when we're talking about segments, that means parts or pieces. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the sound parts of words. I'm going to tell you a word and then you're going to take that word apart one sound at a time. This is something will help you as you are writing words that maybe are unfamiliar to you. Okay? All right. We're going to use our dots to help us. That way it's just a visual reminder of how you can see how many sounds that we heard. And here we go. Our first word is match. Match. All right. Here we go. M ah. Ch. Oh, I did it again. That second that top row doesn't like to take in circles. So let's do m a ch. Did you do three sounds? Good job. All right, let's try the next one. Are you ready? Turn up those listening ears. Here it is. Whisk. Whisk. Oh, these are getting harder. You ready? Here we go. Hwa. I, s, k, wha, I, s, k. Did you hear that ending blend? Don't forget to separate them. They are two separate sounds. Whisk. Great job. Four sounds. All right. I have one last one for you. Ready? Graph. Graph. All right. Let's think about that. Gr. Oh, that's two sounds. Did you hear it? Gr. Ah. Gr. Af. Graph. How'd you do? Great job. Now, at the end of it, I want you just to think about that because you've been learning about digraphs, and I bet you know when you get to the phonics part of our day that you will be able to think about that f sound and whether or not which letter to put at the end. I think that's going to be kind of fun for you to, to try out. Mm -hmm. And if you don't try it out today, maybe you can do that in your writing. But now we've warmed up our brains and it's time for us to warm up our bodies. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. A hippo in the house. I can't believe we're going to have a hippo in the house. Whoa! Where is it? Do you see it? Oh Where my it? goodness. Oh, it's over there. Right there? Yeah. Okay. I'm feeling pretty warm. I All love right. that. Okay, are you guys ready to blend and build and read some words? I, that I sounds think so. great. Okay, All right. let's have fun, go. Mrs. Okay, super readers, don't forget, all week we have been reviewing the digraphs. And remember, digraphs are just two letters, and we put them together, they make a new sound. 
Remember, Mrs. Hammock taught you guys all of our tire graphs, and this week we're going to review them all. So, let's go and practice our tire graph sounds. Are you ready? Okay, we have the SH, and the SH says, shh, good job. We have the CH and the TCH, and they say, ch. Good, remember they make one sound, and that TCH can be found at the end of the word. Good job, let's keep going. TH says, good job. WH says, oh, good. And that's a tricky one, because it does sound like the W sound, which is a wah. This is a wah. And here's a little trick I used to teach my second graders. If you put your hands right in front, if you say like the word whale, whale, you feel a puff of air into your palm. And that's how you can tell if it's a WH or just a W. So if you say, Water, not as much, or no puff fair, but if you say whale, then you do feel it. And that's a trick that I used to teach my second graders when they were writing to see if it was a W or the WH, okay? Let's keep going. F, I'm sorry, not F. I knew that was the F sound, but it's spelled with a PH. That was a tricky one. PH is a digraph, and it makes the F sound like an F. And the NG is another digraph. It says ng, but remember, we like to put vowels with it so we can blend it really fast together. And when we do, it says ng, ing, ong, and ing. So those are our digraphs. Now, we're going to quickly read some of our words with digraphs. And I want you guys to blend and read quickly with me. Ready? Fish, chat, think. Oh, there's that word. Whisk. Remember, we. We're listening to it with Mrs. Hammock earlier. Phonics, remember that PH is that f phonics, and hung. How did you do? Awesome job. Okay, let's get ready to build some words. Are you guys ready? Let's invite some of our friends here to help us build some words. Let's see if our friends can join us. Hello, Hi. Tina. Hi, Mrs. Bing. Hello, Rita. Are you guys ready to build some words with me? Yes, I am. Awesome. Now, don't forget, all week we've been learning with digraphs. So, I'm going to say a word. I want you guys to help me because I know you guys are good at building words. And if you're at home, make sure you have a paper or a pencil or a whiteboard with whiteboard marker ready and you're ready to build me. Okay, you ready? Okay, I want to build the word shot. Shot. Like, like I went to the doctor and got a flu shot. Can you guys help me spell the word shot? Sh oh, first, let's stretch it out. Let's see how many sounds. Sh I'm going to look at the board. Shot. Okay. What's that first sound? Okay, shot. well, the first sound has just like my show, because it has a show card. That's right. That's right. That's good. And we spell that with the S H. S -H. Good job. Mm -hmm. Sh ah. What makes that ah sound? We know that one really well mm -hmm. too. What is it? Oh. Good job. And then the last sound was t. Shot. T. It's a T, like Tina Turtle. That's right. <laughs> good That's job, right. Tina. That's all good. Shot. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to change that word to shot? Ooh, what do I need to do now? Mm. Shop. So I want to change shot to shop. Oh, okay. So I was looking at the sound mm -hmm. spelling board and I was seeing that the sh, shot. And you want to change it to shop. That's right. So that, that means the T is going to go away and you're going to use the P. To, to go at the end. Good job. So to change shot to shop, we change that T to a P. Good <laughs> job, Rita. Okay, I'm gonna have my readers at home read a story with me and find some words of diagraphs. Thank you, you guys, for helping me. All Bye. right. Bye. Okay, super readers, let's get ready to read a quick story with diagraphs. Ready? Okay. A shell on the shore it's its title. You see all that 
digress. I know it's a bit of a challenge. There are some long vowels in these, um, in my passage, and I know we haven't learned long vowels yet, but this is a great way to challenge your brain and listen for those long vowel sounds. And long vowels are just vowels that say their own name. Okay, are you guys ready? Read it with me. Fat got a shell on the shore. There was a chip in the shell. Ooh, can you find all those digraphs? There were a lot of them, good. Fat is one of them, shell, sure, and that was a chicken one because I had that or. Remember, challenge your brain. And there, good. Chip, shell, look how many we found just in the first sentence. Oh, you guys are doing such a great job. Okay, we're gonna try to finish the story later, but Mrs. Hammock is ready to um, share or learn high frequency words with you guys. That's right. All week long, we have been reviewing five of our high frequency words. And so let's take a look at those words again. We, we started with they, they, and then we had around. And yesterday we did the word what, what. All right, so today we're going to do this word. And this is the word there, there. Can you spell it with me? T-H-E-R-E, -E. there, there, good job. All right, now that's the T-H sound that we talked about. Sometimes it's a soft sound, but for this word, it's the sound that has a voice. And when you make that sound, you can feel it right here in your voice box. And it says there. All right, let's take a look at our sentence. Hmm is my pen. We could say where, but since that's not one of our words, we're gonna say there is my pen. Because look right here. If, if I was asking a question, I would need a question mark. But since I have an exclamation, that means I'm going to read it with expression of kind of maybe excitement or just surprise. And I would say, there is my pen. But you were right. I heard somebody say it doesn't have an uppercase letter or a capital at the beginning. And we have to start our sentences with capital letters. So let me undo our magic sentence. And now it says, there is my pen. And we have an uppercase capital T for the word there. How'd you do? Great. All right, all week we've been talking about these high frequency words and we've been working on rereading for a while now. And remember, rereading is a strategy that you can use when you're not sure you understood what you just read, you can go back and reread it. Remember, reading is supposed to make sense. So if you read something and you think, mm, I'm, I'm not sure I understood that, go back and reread it. But there's another reason that you should reread. Sometimes we reread to find information or to mark the text or find text evidence uh, to help us answer questions or to help us to have all of the details that we need. And so we'll be doing lots of that this week. So you're gonna listen to a story called From Caterpillar to Butterfly and then I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Expository text. Compare texts. Read about how baby caterpillars become butterflies. From caterpillar to butterfly. A butterfly is not a mammal. It does not have live babies or feed milk to its young. A butterfly is an insect. It lays eggs. Look at the photo. Can you tell which is the parent and which is the offspring? Probably not. The parent is the butterfly and its baby is the caterpillar. The parent and the offspring do not look alike right now. However, when the caterpillar is grown, it will look like its parent. Butterfly Life Cycle Number 1. Egg the adult butterfly lays an egg on a milkweed leaf. 
number two. Larva. After three or four days, a tiny caterpillar comes out of the egg. Caterpillars are a kind of larva. The caterpillar eats its shell for food. Number three. Caterpillar. For about two weeks, the caterpillar eats leaves and grows bigger. Number four. Chrysalis. The caterpillar forms a shell around itself. The shell is called a chrysalis. Number five, adult. Two weeks later, an adult butterfly comes out of the chrysalis. It will lay an egg on a leaf and the cycle will continue. Isn't that amazing? All of those interesting facts that we can learn about a butterfly. Oh. I just love learning about nature and all of our creatures in the animal kingdom. And so today we're going to go through and we're going to look at some questions because just like Mrs. Hammock was talking about rereading, we reread for a lot of different purposes and we're going to reread some pieces so that we can answer some of these questions. And I think I'm going to invite Ricky. Should I invite Ricky to come and help us today? I think we should. All right, come on, Ricky, come and help me. to retell with you. I know. And so, Ricky, there's a few things that even though we're going to do a little rereading, why are we rereading? It's so that we can retell. Because he's so smart. Is that why? Yes, you do a great job. So let me talk about some of our questions. And then I'm going to have you do a little reading with me and a little retelling. What do you think? Uh, I got this. Oh, I'm so excited, Mrs. Nix. Oh, Mrs. Vick never lets me read. I love it. Let's do it. All right, so here are some of our questions for today. The first one says, how do butterflies produce offspring? And it tells us we have to circle our answer. So I need to go back and reread. And I've got our paragraph right here, and you can kind of see all of the illustrations, but I bet Ricky's can help us find how do butterflies produce offspring? Ricky, before we start, what are offspring? Do you know? Um, what are offspring? Uh, 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 are, they like the, are they like the babies? They are. Offspring is just a fancy way of saying babies. So let's figure out how do butterflies have babies? All right, go ahead. Uh, you want to uh, read this for me right uh, here? Uh, Can you I, see I, it? I, I, mm -hmm. All right. I'm practicing my phonics. Uh -huh. With Mrs. Hammock, okay. I love it. A, a, a butterfly is not a mammal. It does not have live babies or feed milk to its young. A butterfly is an insect. It lays eggs. So can you retell me, Ricky, what does a butterfly do uh, to produce offspring? What did it say? Uh, it, it lays eggs. It does. And what did we have to do? We had to circle that answer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. How'd you do? Did you hear that? All right. Let's try another one. Okay, Ricky, help me out. Here we go. How is a butterfly different from a bear? And we want to underline that clue. So when you went back and reread it, do you remember what it said? Can you retell me that? Mm -hmm. it, it says it's not a mammal. It's not a mammal. That's right. What does it mean to not be a mammal? It means it doesn't have live babies. It doesn't have live babies or, or feed oh, milk. Or, or feed milk to its yeah, yeah. That's right. I was I was reading it and at first I said live and I went <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I had to go back and, and reread it and then it said live, live. And that makes more sense. So I, I so I was thinking about that. But I love head. that you're rereading and using our strategy because that's what we do when it doesn't make sense. Great job. All right, draw a box around the title. Is this a good one for the selection? Where's our title? Right here. From Caterpillar to Butterfly. Is that a good title for our, for our text that we were reading about? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think so because we're talking about how a, a caterpillar becomes a, a butterfly. Now, now, if the title was Ricky's a Great Reader, <laughs> then it wouldn't be a great title. <laughs> Even though I would love that title. Oh, absolutely, Ricky. How about this? It says underlying details about two major changes a butterfly undergoes. And then we're going to, actually, I wrote them here earlier today, but let's see if we can find them in the text. So two details about major changes a butterfly undergoes. And to do that, 
we're going to look over here at the life cycle of a butterfly. And you can see here we've got an egg. The adult butterfly lays an egg on a milkweed leaf. And what's next? They become a larva, right? And that's when the little caterpillars come out. And then, do you see that one, Ricky? What's that one? <laughs> it's a caterpillar. That's a caterpillar. And after they become a caterpillar, what do they do? They, they make chrysalis. That's right. And it forms a shell all around mm -hmm. itself. And you know what's happening? What? It's, it's a big word. It's called metamorphosis. Oh, you're so smart. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, an adult butterfly comes out. So if I were to pick a couple of them out of here, what are some big changes that the butterfly undergoes? Well, right here, when it comes out of the egg, becoming that little tiny larva. Mm -hmm. And then, what about this one over the, here, when it? When, when it's a metamorphosis. That's it, it's right. It's changing from caterpillar to a butterfly. That's right, I absolutely. I like that way. Metamorphosis, you're changing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ricky, for helping me out. You want to help me out with some writing? Uh, okay. All right. Well, come on over here. So let's talk about some of our writing that we're going to do here. And this is going to be right along with what we were just learning about. It's just retelling what that life cycle uh, of a butterfly really is. Now, to help us do that, I have some of our different phases that we were just talking about. And so we want to be able to put them in a circle in order. This is a great activity with any of your stories. You could write any information, especially something that has a life cycle and you want to know the order of something. You could put it on post-it notes and you can rearrange your, um, your sequence of your story. In this case, we're going to be telling the, the cycle of an, of an animal. So let me have my friends come and help us See if they can help retell it. Come on, friends. I'm Hi, back. <laughs> There's Ricky. Thank you so much, Ricky. I think we're really going to rely on you a little bit today because yeah. Ricky was helping us out. So do you remember when we looked at our life cycle of a butterfly, what did we have come first? What were they, what they start as? They start as, as the eggs. Yep, as yep. the eggs. Does it matter where on my circle that I put them? Mm -hmm, it does. You have to put them in order. Okay, but where do I want to start? Could I start right here? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I think it, it kind of doesn't matter because it's a circle. That's it right. It goes around and around and around and around. <laughs> Great. What comes after the eggs? Hmm. Uh, uh, oh, that was that weird word. <gasps> Larva. That's right. That's right. And that's when they first come out of their eggs. Great job. Okay, so then what comes next? Hmm. The caterpillar. Oh, yeah. That's, that's right. It. They grow up big and they become a caterpillar. And then what's next? Oh, then, then that part that Ricky said was his favorite, the <laughs> chrysalis. The chrysalis. You are right. And they p build a cocoon and finally they become... They become butterfly. Butterflies. Butterflies. Awesome. Great work today. And I bet you are looking forward to the story that we have that we'd like to share with you. We'll see you back here in a second. Bye. Good morning, PBS boys and girls. I am Mrs. Tao, the vice principal at Wishon Elementary. I have this wonderful book I want to share with you all. It is Ellie. It's about a little friend elephant named Ellie who finds out a very sad news that where she lives, the zoo is about to close. So she, as one should, depend on her friends to help out what they can do to help the, keep the zoo open. So here, is one of my favorite parts. It shows all of her friends showing what they can do to keep the zoo open. We have a friend here who can move rocks and a friend here who can keep the trees clean and pruned. And at one point, Ellie decided, hey, I wanna contribute and figure out how can I help the keep the zoo open. So she saw a friend zookeeper who had a brush and she figured what is my talent can I use this brush to help keep the zoo open and as she was holding the brush she made a creation this creation was the sunflower but when the zookeeper came by she thought she was in trouble she thought she made a mistake 
and she was wondering, did she ruin the wall? Will she be able to keep the zoo open with her new talents? Read this book and find out. Have a good one, friends. Wow, Ellie, what a great book. Thank you, Gina from Wishon. That was fantastic. I love when our librarians share some of their favorite stories with us. And it's oh. all about animals. And that's ah, perfect. And that's because perfect. this week we've been talking about animals. Wasn't it a perfect story? It was, it was great. Knock, knock. Oh, who's, who's there? there? Doris. Doris, Doris who? who? Uh, Doris Lot. <laughs> that's why I'm late. Oh, oh my, my golly. Goodness. So silly. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Valley PBS. Bye-bye.